Welcome to Saving the Past, IMGD. Well, I'm glad you could all join me today. At least I hope um, some of you have joined me here today. I know um, some of you may be out enjoying your day with family and friends on this Memorial Day. Yes, today is May 25th, 2020. This year really is going by pretty quickly. It is pretty amazing. Well, today I'm going to discuss a few things. First, I want to discuss a little bit about my plans for the channel. And then I'm going to discuss a little something here. Uh, you know, it's a little off subject from gold and silver that I normally discuss, but I think it's all pretty relevant and it all plays into um, what you're doing with your gold and silver. But um, I think first, let's, let's discuss my plans for the channel. I was going to save that for the end, but um, <clears throat> I think we'll start off with that. Uh, I have, as I had mentioned last week or the week before, actually it's happened a few times, I've had a few health issues lately, and I think it is time for me to take a little break. I'm not going away. I'm just going to slow down here a little bit. Um, I had been producing three videos a week. And I don't know what my actual plans are for this next five to six weeks. Uh, I have things I have to do, and I need to get myself back healthy again. So at most, I'm probably only going to do one video a week, and it's very possible there may be weeks I do absolutely no videos, but that'll depend upon what's going on out there in the markets. I will make that decision um, week by week. But come July, I will start gearing back up again. I don't know that I will go back to doing three videos a week because that is a lot of work. And I'm really at an age now where I um, want to enjoy life a little bit instead of working real hard. But I am going to share my experiences with you folks. And that's something that I want to discuss here today a little bit about what influenced me over the years and what helped me make the decisions that I made. That doesn't mean they're going to, what I'm going to discuss is going to be relevant to you and your situation, but it might give you a little bit of an idea of things to think about. Um, I, I guess I'm pretty fortunate over the years of um, some of the influencers I've had in my life, but it all started off when I was a, a young child. I, I came from a family that was not wealthy by any means. As a matter of fact, uh, we were on the verge of poor. Um, my family was middle class to lower middle class, I guess you might say. Um, you know, we struggled. There's no doubt about it. We didn't go without, that's for sure. Um, you know, I grew up with horses and I grew up on a nice little piece of property in a decent house, but my father worked a lot of hours to uh, make those things happen, and so did my mother. Um, but at the end of each week, their credit card bills and the purchases they made seemed to have always eaten away at um, any chance that they had for getting ahead. And that's one of the reasons why I pound on that subject of not getting yourself into credit card debt because I saw it happen. My grandparents, my mother's uh, mother and um, stepfather, um, all my grandparents lived through the Depression, but uh, my mother's um, mother and stepfather, not only did they suffer through that period of time, but uh, later on in life they suffered as well. Um, they had opened up long before I was born, a um, pretty popular vegetable stand in a good-sized city in New Jersey. Actually, I believe it's probably the largest city in New Jersey. Um, but in any case, when I was very young, uh, my grandparents went into some hard times, and they actually filed for bankruptcy, and in doing so, they lost their home. So this was a pretty big influence on me, seeing that happen to them, even though I was young and probably didn't understand everything about it. But it was a foundation for things that happened years later. As I became a teenager, 
It is um, interesting that most of the friends that I surrounded myself with were friends that came from families that did have money. As a matter of fact, two of my best friends when I was growing up, um, from the time I was roughly about 11, 12 years old, on through my teens, um, both of those families had, their families owned steel companies, and they were very well off. So I got to listen to conversations that were going on um, about money and business and things of that nature. So I think that was a very big influence on me. And then as I got a little bit older, um, I've mentioned to you folks about the man that gave me my opportunity in the um, gold and silver business. And he was a brilliant man and shared a lot of great information with me. And as time went on, um, you know, I was starting to develop into the person that I was and the thinking that I had. And um, I started attracting people to me that um, were major influencers. Uh, I've mentioned before, I've known professional athletes and um, I've known pretty important business people um, some of it through family connections, some of it through connections through my business. Uh, you know, one particular um, man that um, I got to spend time around who was a very wealthy man, uh, limo-driven type of man, owned a big medical company. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I got to see the workings of that kind of thing. So these are all things that influence me. So what I'm getting at is, is there's been a big conversation over the years amongst the professionals of what is it that makes people who they are? Is it genetics or is it environment? Well, I think they're still having that argument today. Um, I think genetics does play quite a bit of a part in it, but I think your environment uh, really is the bulk of what's going to make you who you are. You know, there's an old saying, it's kind of uh, a funny saying, but um, it is really a fact, and that is you can't soar like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. Well, heck, I've had some friends in my life that were turkeys too, and I enjoyed the heck out of them. There's no doubt about that. But I did try to in, uh, surround myself with as many eagles as I possibly could. And um, I think that was a big influence on me and the directions I took in life. So again, uh, we're not discussing gold and silver here. We're, we're discussing things that people can do um, to try and better their life. And I think this is an appropriate conversation right now because I know some of you may be out of work. Some of you may never get your jobs back again. And um, others of you may find that the um, position that you had before might be altered into something else. So one of the things that um, maybe you may want to consider uh, doing at this point is possibly thinking about starting a little business. Um, you know, you if if you're gonna even if you're gonna keep your job um, when this is all over, or you have not lost your job, starting a little sideline business might be a great idea. Uh, I I can't give you any ideas as to what would be a good business because that is all a personal thing. Uh, I think what you have to do is think about what you enjoy because um, if all you're trying to do in life is try to make money, you probably never will make money. Um, you've got to do things in life that you enjoy doing and if it winds up being successful, well, then the money comes afterwards. And believe me, there's many of entrepreneurs out there that became very wealthy that failed at business many times before they actually came on to something that worked tremendously for them to allow them to get to a different level in life. Um, you know, <clears throat> I, I think... Uh, right now, getting off onto a different subject, and oh, by the way, uh, discussing businesses, uh, not only do you need to pick something that you enjoy doing, but you have to find a void 
in what is out there and a need for those products. And just as an example of that right now, um, you know, and this isn't a suggestion to do something like this because this isn't right for all of you, but it is something that was a very powerful part of my business over the years, and that is maybe start a scrap buying business. Uh, maybe get a sales tax license, open up a little location someplace in your area and start buying scrap gold and silver and things of that nature and allow it to develop into um, other things as you go down the road. Uh, it is not a <clears throat> business that um, you're going to get extremely wealthy at, but it is a business that turns a lot of dollars. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And one of these days, I may discuss the inside workings of that kind of a business, from what you need to pay to where you sell the stuff and um, how you can maximize profits out of some of those things. Um, but that's not today. That might be sometime in the future. Um, but one of the things you probably want to do right now getting into the situation where we are right now in this very moment, um, and you heard me say this a number of times, is to keep some of your powder dry. I hope some of you um, have been saving some money over the years, but if you haven't and you're not in a position to actually take advantage of some of the great buys that are going to be coming along here in the very near future, I suggest you start saving for the future because where we're at now, maybe not as bad as where we're at now, but um, recessions or downturns in the economy tend to come about every 10 years. Sometimes they come a little sooner, sometimes it takes a little longer. So if you're not prepared to take major advantage of what's going on right now, I suggest you start putting yourself in a position to take advantage in the future um, because there will be other um, times when you're going to have those opportunities. But in this particular situation here right now, there's going to be a lot of great opportunities and there's going to be a lot of wealth built uh, right now. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to lose everything they own, but there's going to be a lot of people that are going to become very wealthy throughout this. And um, what probably is going to wind up being things that people are going to start looking at now, not that they're going to buy now because the market has not found bottoms in a lot of these things, but there are people out there that are going to wind up having a lot of success over the coming years by investing in real estate or gold and silver or collectibles or stocks. I mean, there's any number of things you can invest in. Some of those are going to be winners. Some of those are going to be losers over the years to come. But um, there are going to be people that are going to build wealth because of that. Um, but again, if you're not in a position to take advantage of those things now, start preparing for the next time there's going to be an upheaval so that you're in better position to be able to take advantage of them then. But as far as investments are concerned, or let's discuss gold and silver, because that's what got me going on doing these videos in the first place was um, there was a lot of misinformation out there. There were a lot of people that were um, pushing silver and giving outrageous figures that they thought that these prices would get to be. And um, I had to step in to start doing videos just to calm that down a little bit based on the experiences I've had over the years and knowing the gold and silver market as well as I do. So um, <clears throat> the key is, is that, um, you know, there were a lot of people out there that may not have had as much information as they should have had to be pushing those kind of prices. And then there were some out there that were pushing those high prices because they stood to gain by something. And you've heard me say that before too. Um, maybe they were bullion dealers, or maybe they are somebody that, um, you know, owns an investment company and they were trying to prop up the idea of that's where you should be so that you would buy into their investments. You know, I don't know. Um, I didn't really follow a lot of these 
sites that were pushing silver that way, but you know that I have said that Gold is where I concentrate on. I do buy silver, but I concentrate on gold, and there's a reason for that. And that is, over the years, it tends to be more of a steady eddy. I, I, it does fall just like silver does. Um, it doesn't make those meteoric rises like silver can. Um, but overall, it tends to be a little bit more of a level playing field. So. That's why I have always suggested that, and I've always used silver as my speculating metal. Um, buying and selling it, in and out of it, uh, wherever I saw resistance levels, and buying back on dips down close to support levels, and um, it worked for me over the years. That doesn't mean it's going to work for you, it just means that it worked for me over the years. But there's one thing that I do know, and that is, is that you want to be really careful with any market, whether it be real estate, gold, silver, stocks, or anything, you want to be really cautious um, of what can possibly uh, happen when you listen to analysts. You know, analysts are, again, you know, they have something to gain, and you want to be really careful listening to what analysts are suggesting. Um, and actually, <clears throat> you want to be careful when you're paying attention to what big investors are doing. A perfect example is um, Warren Buffett, uh, probably the greatest investor of all time. But if you follow what he's doing, you're too late. Uh, you know, uh, Warren Buffett here recently announced that he has been selling off airline stocks. Well, the point is, is it takes months for him to register uh, what his intentions are because he's such a major investor. He can't just go into the market and start dumping a bunch of stock. Um, he owns such big positions in companies that um, it takes time registering what his intentions are. So by the time you hear that news, that trade's already over with. So the point is, is it's pretty difficult to take advantage of those situations there. So you really need to do your own research on things um, and not be influenced by what analysts are saying or what large investors are saying that they have done. Um, so one of the things you can possibly do there is pay attention to what the mass crowd is doing. When a lot of people are buying something, such as stocks or real estate or gold or silver or anything like that, that's generally an indication that we're coming close to a top. When everybody hates something, well, that's generally when we're getting to a point where we're close to a bottom. And I'm not saying that following the crowd is not the right thing to do, because sometimes it is the right time to do. I mean, you know, if you had followed the crowd over the past 10 years in the stock market, uh, even though there were a number of pullbacks, uh, you did well. But now... We are near a top. Even though we dropped and came back up again, this market's probably going to come back down again. And I've noticed that a lot of people are starting to rah-rah that re return that we've had here over the past couple of weeks since we hit a stock market bottom. And um, that's the kind of things I like to pay attention to that worry me quite a bit. And that means that I would stay the heck out of the stock market right now unless I wanted to be full-time seeking out companies that possibly can take advantage of this kind of a market. Um, and there are ways to do that. Um, it's just that uh, you have to be very astute and pay attention to these companies. Um, I had mentioned starting a business. Uh, that's always a great thing to possibly do, um, even if it is just a part-time thing, fun thing. It helps build, at least uh, actually, it not, not only has the possibility to build some wealth, but it has the possibility to build some um, direction in your life and help you learn about things that you may not have learned otherwise. 
But I think probably the biggest thing that I would suggest to anybody, if you're trying to get ahead in life, uh, if you're trying to get ahead in life, I, I know some of you may have been buying silver because you think uh, it's going to be something more than um, <clears throat> just a wealth protector, um, but instead really more of a wealth builder. And some of you are going to do well with that. There's no doubt about it. But I think if you want to build wealth in life, you have to start with the most important tool you have, and that's your mind. <laughs> Excuse me. So I think some of the things that probably influenced me over the years is, um, and again, some of these things may not work for some of you. Some of it may work for some of you. Um, I, I just throw things out there discussing the direction that my life took. And if any of this works for you, great. If it doesn't, throw it all out. It's, you know, just something I'm putting out there. But I think um, a big influence, uh, you know, some will say stand in front of a mirror every day and tell yourself that you're going to do well today or things are going to go well or whatever. You know, that was never my thing. But I do love inspirational quotes. And, um, you know, I think um, adding a couple of inspirational quotes into your life every day could never hurt. I mean, just think, there, there's a reason why a big company like Nike uses uh, their tagline, just do it. I mean, that's an inspirational thing, and um, it worked for them. It, it became a company from, you know, being a good-sized company to being the dominant company within that field there. Another thing that um, probably would help a great deal, and I learned this through a sales training course that I took many years ago that, um, you know, I used to do this, I don't any longer. Well, I'm now at an age where I'm not trying to set the world on fire anymore, but um, I did do this for a long time, and I think it is something that... Um, really helped a great deal, and that is find something that you really want. I mean, I mean, it is like burning inside of you. You really want this. Find a picture of it, um, whether it be a supercar, um, maybe a, some special home that you want, or maybe it's just dollars you want. I, I don't think dollars is really the best way to approach it because again as i had said earlier um you know you got to do what you love in life the dollars will come um later but if your whole direction is just to get dollars you're probably going to fail but in any case find something that you really really want and it's a burning desire find a picture of it cut that picture out and paste it someplace where you're going to see it every day now, just wanting something will not get it for you. I mean, you really have to set out a plan. And you've heard me discuss that before, too. You've got to plan. You've got to create a way that you're going to wind up getting that object that you want. But if you create enough desire in yourself for something you really want, you're also going to work extremely hard to find ways to get it. And I think that is probably one of the most important things I could say here today. You know, to use an old cliche, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And how true that really is. Until you take the first step to improve your life, um, you are just standing still. Okay, folks. Um, you know, one of the things I'm going to suggest, uh, I, you know, I hope that when you, I, I know many of you folks are subscribers with me, and for that I really appreciate it. I know there's a great larger proportion of people that watch my videos and do not subscribe, um, and that's fine, but if you want to keep track of what I'm doing here, especially over these next four, six, seven weeks that I'm going to be taking a little time off, please subscribe. And probably just as important is hit that little bell next to it. That way you can keep track of when I do add new videos, since I will not be on a regular time frame like I have been in the past of Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. So hit that little bell notification. That way you can keep track of what I'm planning on doing. 
And um, I always appreciate when you hit the like button. If I've done anything here today to help you, um, to motivate you, to give you some direction, um, then please hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you didn't like what I said, that's fine too. Um, I appreciate all comments. Uh, uh, the good ones stroke my ego. The bad ones give me an education to know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, folks. I hope you're all enjoying your day. Um, again, I'm not going away. I'm just cutting back on what I'm planning on doing here for a while until I feel better. Okay, until next time, take care. This is GD.